Welcome everybody to our Ready Teacher chat this afternoon. Teachers share what works. I'm glad that you all are joining us this afternoon. I'm Teddy Bowen-Wider, one of the Partner Success Managers and also the Director of um, Professional Development. And joining me from the Ready Rosie team is Anna, and I'll let Anna introduce herself. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. My name is Anna Bogoyevich and I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator here at Ready Rosie. Been helping out uh, with uh, webinars and um, sending those newsletters out to all of you. And I also was uh, formerly a user of Ready Rosie. Thank you all for being here today. Super. And while people are still joining on um, or signing on, we want you to let us know who you are. So in the chat room, if you'll let us know your name, your location, your role, if you're currently a Ready Rosie user. And then also, just for a minute or two, while people are still joining in, um, enjoy this little slideshow that um, Brooks Head Start in Dallas put together from one of their family event. So enjoy that and then we'll get started. And hopefully our sound will work. Or not. They started their day with a quick training to educate the parents on what Ready Rosie is and how it could benefit their children and their families. And then after the training that they had, the parents joined um, in the fun. They actually did the activities with their kids. Each classroom chose two um, of the videos. They watched the video first and then the children and families participated in the activity just like they would if they were using it at home. They wanted, their goal was they wanted to show the parents how easy, fun, and beneficial Ready Rosie curriculum was. So hopefully everybody's had a chance to join us, so we'll just keep on going. And there's our music, yay. I'll let you listen to it for a second. Okay, while we go through our webinar, our webinar this afternoon, if you have questions and uh, questions, use our Q&A to ask questions. When our panelists are sharing, feel free to pose questions and they'll answer them as we go along. So before we get started, we have our first poll question of the webinar. And the question is, what is your job title? And I believe your choices are, I'm a classroom teacher, I'm a family service worker or home visitor, I'm an instructional specialist or coach, I'm an administrator, or I'm an other. So I'll give everybody a few seconds to lock in your answer, give our home viewers time to put their vote in, and then we will share our results. Oh, good, good. So the majority of you all are classroom teachers, super. Um, and then pretty much split between the family service worker, home visitors, and other. But we know working with all of our partners, all of our partners have it set up differently as to who's, who's interacting, who's doing the playlist, who's doing the family engagement. So whatever your role is, I know that um, you'll be able to get some, glean some good information. So we're very, very excited to have um, Laura Alfaro and Melissa Lael join us this afternoon. And so I'm gonna let Laura introduce herself and tell just a little bit about her, herself and her school, and then we'll let Melissa have a turn. So Laura. Hi, um, I'm Laura Alfaro and I teach kindergarten. This is my second year teaching kindergarten. It's my eighth year teaching overall. Um, it's my second year also in the school that I'm at right now. 
Okay, what, what, um, what's the makeup of your school, of your campus? We are, um, we're a Title I school, but we're also an IB campus, which is the International Baccalaureate. Okay. Um, we are very lucky that we have a school that really understands and promotes play. So that has oh. been great, because we can incorporate these activities into our classes. Well. So Super. Yeah. How long have you all been using Ready Rosie? The district has been using it for a while. I know that our, the school that I'm right now, this is probably the second year where it's been more of a push for us to try to use it with families. Um, it's my first year really trying to use it more. Okay, all right, great. All right, and so um, now we'll hear from Melissa. Um, Melissa, if you'll tell us a little bit about, um, and Laura, I don't remember if you said or not, she's here in Denton, um, teaches in Denton ISD, which is where our Ready Rosie home office is. And Melissa is in the Houston area. So we'll let Melissa tell a little bit about herself. And Melissa, you might have to unmute yourself. Okay. okay. There, okay. perfect. There it is, okay. Uh, so, this is Leanne in Houston, Texas. Um, Jingle Creek. And have about seven students in our school range from pre-K three to fifth grade. Um, our school is about 83% economically disadvantaged, and we've been using uh, Ready Rosie for two years now. Okay, what what size is your is your um, campus, your school? On the east side of Houston. It's on the east side, and about how many students do you think, or would you say attend? I'm sorry? About how many st total students attend your, your school? About 700. 700, okay, all right, good. Okay, well we've asked Laura and Melissa to share not only how they are using Ready Rosie in their class, but also how they partner with families. And so we're gonna let um, Laura go first. Um, on if you wanna turn off our, our videos, that would be fabulous while we switch back to the slide. So we'll let Mo, um, Laura go ahead and she's gonna talk about how she has, is integrating Ready Rosie into her classroom. So we, I have been sending the playlist home and usually I'll send the paper version and the email that goes along with the playlist. But most of my families, they may have access to a computer, most of them have access to their phone but the majority of them will check a paper from them. So that's where I've been most successful in getting them back. Um, and one of the activities we did was the stump the letters. So that one was the first one I did that we sent home. And the kids, you know, they we practiced it at school and they took some chalk home and then we did the stump the letter. And then in the classroom, we did like a, basically like a twister and then they had it and they could actually stump the letter in the classroom and then we moved to the high frequency words. And that's something that we still use. Um, and my lower kids will use the letters, while well, my higher kids will use like different lists of the high frequency words. But that's an activity that they still like. And if I take it away for a week, they'll ask, when are we playing that again? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I love how you, you really differentiated that one activity for the different levels of your kids. Mm -hmm. So, and then they can go home and tell the parents the different ways that they have played it at school. All right, and then tell us a little bit about this one. So, the one of the activities we have done too is writing, and that's a big push for our school, just writing in general. So, I sent home like the booklets we use in the classroom for writing alongside with one of the activities that I think it was like the writing a story. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then I sent home the like the playlist paper and then a copy of the paper and then we watched the video as a class with the kids at the end of the day so then they went home and then i told them to watch it with the parents if they could but if not they already knew mm -hmm. what was expected of them so in this one this particular activity i one of the students in my class she she's never able to return any of the work that i sent home mm -hmm. but she returned this activity the next day oh wow she, was able to do it mm -hmm. all on her own. She didn't mm -hmm. depend on anyone else to right. do it. So and oh, that's, that's exciting. Yeah, that's, 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 pretty, that's very exciting. Yeah. Well, I want to ask if you um, could give one tip 
to a teacher that's starting to use Ready Rosie or has been using Ready Rosie but doesn't have the engagement really that they want? What's one tip you would share with a teacher? Um, you know, for me, um, and this you know varies my classroom, but I, in my classroom and in my experience, I found that my parent population is more successful with a paper product rather than an electronic or mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. like sometimes with Facebook, they might have it for their personal use, but they're not always following a, a school. On the school. So yeah. interesting. Yeah, <laughs> and, but I have had better success sending like a paper copy mm -hmm. and then explaining it to the kids. And it was funny because today, um, I can't remember what it was, but it was the Ready Rosie uh, logo and they were like, oh, are we getting a, a Ready Rosie homework home? So they oh, recognize yeah, and yeah. they see the logo and they it's yeah. Great. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. good, good. Well, who would have thought that Ready Rosie would be part of environmental print? Yes, well, they see How the exciting is that? We will ride. We're part, we're part of environmental print yes. with McDonald's and all those <laughs> other things. Well, that's exciting. All right, well, before we um, let Melissa share what she's doing in the classroom, it's time for our second poll question. And this poll question is, are you currently integrating Ready Rosie into your classroom instruction? And your answers are yes, once, yes, on a regular basis, no, I wish I did, now I plan on trying, nope, no time for fun. Anna, that's a horrible choice. <laughs> All right, we'll give it just uh, 10 more seconds to get your answers in. All right. Can you see the results? Oh, good. Yes, yes. Oh, I'm excited that 54% aren't yet, but now they plan on trying it. Um, and I'm thinking that that 4%, no, no time for fun. I don't think that that probably reflects their, their own personal thought. It may be that the environment that they're in, they don't feel like they have time to create, to, to promote the, um, the play. But as I always try to explain to teachers, as long as you can defend it instructionally, and if you go to our um, under resources, if you go to our curriculum maps and alignment, all of our Ready Rosie videos are linked to a, sta a state standard. Um, and so you can always link our activities to a learning standard. So check that out. So now we're gonna let Melissa um, explain a little bit about what she's, what she's doing to um, integrate and make that homeschool connection. And then she's also going to share with us how she gets the parent engagement that she gets. I think she has, if not 100%, then pretty close to 100% of her families watching and responding and commenting on the videos. So, Melissa, it's your turn. Okay, so I've been using Ready Rosie for about two years and I began with sending it home as I would send videos every week and they could work on it throughout the week and send it back on Friday. You could go to the next slide. Yes. Thank you. So I would send the sheet on the left home and uh, my instructions for the your account on Ready Rosie and how to log on to watch the videos leave a that's they would do the homework. And if they I noticed it was hard beginning because whenever they would it, it would send it to an individual message. And so the student by checking if they completed their homework. Um now that's there the next one. Right, and just real quickly, I want to jump in and say that because of Melissa creating that expectation and setting that expectation the way she was doing, we had reached out to her and she told us that that's what she was doing. And because of what she was already doing, it inspired us to create this flyer for Melissa and all the rest of you that show 
that give that expectations for your families to watch the video, do the activity, click on the we did it, and then comment. And this flyer can be found in the resource section. Yes. Yeah. Is that the slide you want? Yes, okay. So this is what it would look like. I would um, touch a video that they needed to, they would receive it as a message. Or they could go directly to the website and type the website. Um, and they would again watch it, complete the activity, um, the comment by Friday. And with time, they started becoming more And again, because of what Melissa was creating and a lot of the rest of you all who were letting us know that that you were creating a log similar to the the read at home logs that we use but you were using a log for parents to keep track of the videos that you were watching because of that that inspired us to create the printable playlists um, and then also the playlist reports so keep sending us your ideas because we really do use them to try to make your lives easier so Melissa, talk a little bit about the data and the comments and how you use the comments for your, in your instruction. And sorry, now, um, Melissa, before you start, could you adjust your microphone a little bit? I'm hearing in the chat that the audio is breaking up a little bit. So you can try to move your microphone. Is that better? Can you guys hear me? Oh, yeah. that's, that's very that's clear now. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so now each student receives their own data, um, which I love because they can fit iPhone home to watch videos of uh, their own. See, they're really focusing on their own. Um, for example, this student, um, the blue is the language, so we can see that they're really working on that. You can see this student. And on the right side, that's the that I sent. So at the beginning, they started one and said it was fun, that it was good. And I wanted to receive more from the parents to understand if, if the project any because the video that correlates to what we do in the classroom. So now, after asking the parents, they a lot more comments in detail know if they understood the activity or and I think this one just showed where early on their um, their comments were pretty short and then as they gone on um, and gotten more used to commenting their comments have gotten longer and a little more informative and that really helped me as a teacher. Um, this during the activity or this scale or concept, you know, they hear the hear what the parents see at home, and it's great for them because they also learning. They they're also practicing it with it. And then here's just another another example of one of her students. And one of the things that I'm always intrigued by is just the difference of the, the videos that they're watching, where how you can see, you know, who's who's watching what what kind of videos. And I think we're still having a little bit of trouble, Melissa, with the audio. Um, make sure the audio on your computer is off. And um, if that doesn't help, we can also um, send a little summary, a written summary as well as a, in our follow up. Um, when we send out the recording. Okay, perfect. So do you want to add anything about any of these comments from this particular little kiddo, kind of how they progressed or how you used those comments in your instruction to inform your instruction? Um, yes. Um, so I could see that um, she loved some of the videos, like some of would say that she would practice a lot at home and she would keep repeating the video. So that makes me happy, you know, to know that they 
want to keep learning at home with their families. Um, on another video, she said she did it, but with a little help. So I can see that in that specific skill, I can work with her one-on-one -on -one or in a small group here in the class. And one thing that we've heard from others, some of our other partners that they've liked about the comments, some of their comments have been, um, didn't like this video because he doesn't really like picture books anymore. He's reading chapter books now. And so as the teacher explained to me, that's a way that, you know, they can talk about the, still the importance of using those chat, uh, those picture books for, for comprehension, but also knowing that that child has moved on to chapter books. Another parent had commented after the parent asked them to do a nonfiction, um, one of the nonfiction videos, that um, she personally enjoyed this activity because she didn't realize that her child actually knew so much about snakes and that because of that activity that they did at home, now they were able to talk and look up different facts about snakes. And so, not that that's critical that they know about snakes and they share information about snakes, but they now have a common thing that they can continue to look up and talk about as a family. Thank you, Melissa, for sharing, sharing all of that. And so now, time for our poll question number three. Anna, do you want to read this question? Uh, yes, so poll question number three is, have you sent a custom playlist? So we want to know, um, are you sending one weekly, monthly, rarely? <clears throat> no, not yet, but you can't wait to try. You're so inspired after today. Or no, but thanks for asking. Maybe not, now's not your time. Um, let us know. I'll leave that up for a few more seconds. All right, can you see the poll results? Yes, I love that. Okay, so 26% of you all are sending them weekly. Um, Laura said she sends hers home weekly. Melissa, you send yours home weekly also. Um, some send home monthly. Some are doing it rarely. I love the fact that 40% of you aren't, but yet you just can't wait to try. And the 5% that um, appreciate us asking, I would encourage you to set a goal. I get it. We're on the countdown to spring break. I know for us here locally, it's not next week, but the week after. We're also kind of gearing up towards next year. So I would like to encourage those of you that haven't yet sent one home to set a goal to maybe send home one in April and one in May. And that's, that's just two. Or maybe just send one home between now and the end of the year. I think when you do, you'll realize how, how easy they are to create and send and that your, your families really enjoy them. So we'll take just a second in case, um, and we'll turn um, Laura's video back on and Melissa's sound back on. So we'll take just a minute in case some of you all have some specific questions that you wanna ask of Laura or Melissa. And if you don't have one right now, we'll, um, we'll certainly have an opportunity right at the end. And then if, after we answer these questions, we will, um, I just have a couple other things to share with you. So we'll see if anybody has any burning questions. I have one um, in relationship to the custom playlist. About how long does it take you, would you say, to create a custom playlist? Um, it doesn't take long at all. Um, once you search the video and then you add the video that you want, and I usually try to send two, like a math video and a literacy video. Okay. I would say maybe 10 minutes. 10 that, minutes. I even write a little note for parents and okay. once I print it in. Okay, good. And the nice thing is now you'll have the ability, they save, and so you'll have them next year yes. to use. Melissa, how long would you say it takes you to do a customized playlist? Not long at all, maybe five to 10 minutes as well. I like okay. the um, bar that you 
um, you can actually search, like if it's rhyming, you can type rhyming. Photo from school awareness takes you direct to all the videos. Okay. So it's very super. Super. All right, Anna, do we have any questions? Yes, we do have a couple of questions. Um, okay. The first one um, is asking if Ready Rosie can be used with uh, school age children, um, with the elementary age group. Well, I can answer that one. Our content goes from birth up through third grade. And so, yes, it can be used with elementary age children. And I personally know of a fourth grade teacher who is using it um, almost as a intervention with some of her kiddos that need a little bit of remediation. She sends home the appropriate age activities for those for those children. Great. Um, the next question is, um, it was mentioned in a seminar that we were working on a director's page view. Can you tell us how that is going and when we can expect to see it? I'm sorry, repeat the question again. I think um, they're asking about the administrator's view, I believe. Oh, right. Um, we can follow up with you um, individually about that. We do have an admin view that um, we can check in and, and find out more what you're asking about. Right. I know that they've been working on updating that admin view, um, but um, we'll, we'll get back with you with a, with a specific answer on that. Right. There are certain permissions, so that might be one of the factors. Um, here's another question. Um, someone is asking um, or saying that, that I work from an office and I don't get to see my parents regularly. I've tried emailing the link to parents, text as well, but haven't had much luck. Any suggestions? Uh, Laura, Melissa, do either one of y'all want to say how you tackled some of those families that were hard to connect with and what you did? Um, you know, like there's always, I feel like there's always at least one. Um, and I think sometimes it's hard because you have your work schedule or life you know, mm -hmm. it's just hard mm -hmm. to get a hold of it but um sometimes i try to get through the children first like you know like if like we watched the playlist together so that we the students have the ability to do the activities on their own but if it's contacting the parents that's you know i would say maybe i mean for me what works has been paper um usually parents will check it and even if it's a few days they'll mm -hmm. send it back afterwards mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you know, that's okay. kind of tough yeah, it is. It is. Melissa, do you have any anything to add to that? Um, well, I use Remind a lot for my parents. I Remind? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Remind app to message them. It's very easy because you receive it as a text message. So that's what I mostly use. And um, also the printable playlist, sending that a lot to students, making it responsible, like Laura said. Okay. And I know, okay. I know a couple teachers that had a hard, that were having a hard time mm -hmm. connecting with um, or having getting their teachers. Or I'm sorry, let me back up. Some admins whose teachers were having a difficult time connecting with some of their families used the parent teacher conference time to explain Ready Rosie and show them the playlist and things like that. So um, it's a it's I think it's a an ongoing problem with with connecting or trying to get all of those families connected. Any other questions, Anna? Yeah, um, there there are a few more, and if we don't answer you live, I will get back to you. Um, one last live question: Where do you find the paper copy, um, the printable playlists? Um, anyone want to take that? Teddy, do you want to? So. Um, I don't know if I'm going to give a very... No, that's fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. Once you create the playlist, uh, it gives you the option to preview the playlist, and mm -hmm. then it gives you the option to print in English or in Spanish. So that has been, you know, I always print it in Spanish for my parents, mm -hmm. and then it's very easy. And it prints whatever is on the screen, and then if you type in a little note, it'll print that as well. Mm -hmm. And when you, um, to see the, the playlist report, up in the top right-hand corner are those three little dots. And if you click on those three little dots, 
the drop down menu will um, show um, print playlists and your playlist report. And we have, if you want to shoot us your information, we have a Zoom video that we can send out that um, will help you see how to do that. So the, those are all great questions. Continue to ask them. And like Anna said, if we don't answer them all online, Anna will be answering them through the, through the chat as well. So just a couple of other things I wanted to share with you, some ideas that um, we've heard from some of our other partners across the country. Those are all the places where we are. We have a couple states that we haven't quite made it into, but I know that there are plans to get into those states as well. And so I wanna give a shout out to Taylor Elementary in Hobbs, New Mexico. They just recently had a family engagement night, February 21st. And these were the posters and flyers that they used to get the word out. They had three rooms set up, I believe, and the parents rotated through those three rooms doing different Ready Rosie activities. But what I love about their flyer was their question, do you ever say, I want to help my kids, I just don't know how. I love that question because I think that's a question that a lot of our families have. I think they're thirsty for knowing how to help their children at home. I think sometimes they're intimidated when we say, we're having a literacy night, come, come learn how to read your child or come learn how to help your child with their letters or whatever. But when it's, you know, we know you're asking, we know you wanna know how to help your child. I think it's just a way to flip that lens and validate that they do wanna help their child. So I really like the way that they, they worded that. They also, you'll see down there on the bottom of the you're invited um, slide, but they gave students a free 100 for attending as well as having other giveaways. This next slide is from Henry Elementary in Mesquite, Texas, and they had a Ready Rosie family event. They had stations set up around the cafeteria. And as the families came in, they had someone greeting them in English and Spanish and asking them right off the bat, are you receiving the Ready Rosie videos, the Ready Rosie playlist? And if they said no, then they scooped them over to a table and helped them accept that invitation so that hopefully nobody got out of there without having, you know, accepted that invitation and gotten, um, gotten registered. As I said, the families rotated through the, the stations at their leisure, and then when they left, every family got a little Ready Rosy bag that they had put together, and inside each bag was a sticker, a Ready Rosy sticker, a Ready Rosy button, a little inexpensive matchbox car for the race car activities, and then a set of dice, two dice, because some of our activities require dice. And they felt that those, the dice and the matchbox car were probably two things that families might not readily have at home. So they wanted to provide those for them. We've heard from some of you all that you give away a basket like that with maybe dice and a little car and a deck of cards when your families register. We've heard from some of our partners that they will give away a little ready rosy basket or bag with something similar inside to, um, to kind of incentivize for those top video watchers. So maybe the child who watched 10 videos for the month gets a little Ready rosy basket. We also have in our resources a free Ready rosy certificate that you can download and you can edit it to add your name and the kids' names. This is from Ruffley School in Elk Grove Village, Illinois. And what I love about this particular family event was they specifically focused just on social and emotional learning. So they had a family SEL night where they were sharing some of the, not only the Ready Rosie SEL content, but also some of the other activities that they do during their day. So one of the stations that families went to was like circle time where they have their share time. Then the next station was where the families participated in both active breaks and calming breaks. So they could start experiencing what their, fam what their children are going through during the day. And then the third station focused specifically on sharing the Ready Rosie website 
and explaining how they felt it was a powerful resource for their families. Their assistant principal introduced the site to the families and the wide variety of the, of the videos that are available to them. And then their teachers were available there to help the parents sign up. And the parents, each family left with a copy of the website to check it out at home and also books that they could share with their children that focused on social and emotional learning. This was from Frederick, Maryland, and they had um, a Ready Rosie night, or I'm sorry, breakfast cafe. And what I thought was unique about this was, we hear from a lot of our partners that it's hard to get the parents to come, they don't have an hour, everybody's busy. And so this group, utilize the drop-off time. And so when the parents came and dropped their kiddos off, they had a little breakfast cafe and fed them breakfast. They shared the workshop, You Can Make a Difference. And I just thought that was a clever way. There's a group in Tennessee that was also commiserating that it's hard to get their families to come. And they finally realized that on their field trip days, all their parents come for field trips. They also realized that the families come when the kids come, even though there might be 30, 45 minutes to an hour before they actually leave for the field trip. And so they thought, what a perfect time for part of the staff to take those families off to another room and, create, and do a little workshop, maybe give me 10, part of one of the workshops, share some of the activities with the, with the families, while the rest of the staff is with the kiddos getting all those administrative things done that you have to do before you leave for, um, for a field trip. So again, I think those are both two really creative ways of using time that you already have, that families are already there to share some of the Ready Rosie content. This was from Southern, um, Southern Maryland. And this was just another twist. They were already doing a night, a family night, and Ready Rosie was one part of the other things that they were doing. And so it, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a whole Ready Rosie night event. It can be part of something. Maybe you're already doing a health and fitness night. So Ready Rosie could be one station in that, at that health and fitness night and maybe share some of the research and answer videos about the importance of routines or some of those other videos for health and well being. So, some of you all may be thinking as we shared these ideas from our Ready Rosie partners, well, we do, well, we do that, well, we do something similar to that. And so, I want to make sure that you all are aware of our new feature in our Ready Teacher newsletter, or two new features that we've added. One is ask Rosie a question, and the other is share a success story. And so in each month in our Ready Teacher newsletter, you can click on, Rose, on ask Rosie a question and type your email address, type your question. You can see on our, our slide there that we had two responses. We were so excited, and we actually have already answered those questions. But you can also share your success. And so we want to know what, what you're doing. How are you integrating Ready Rosie in your classroom? How are you doing that family engagement? What are you doing to get your families engaged and participating in Ready Rosie? And I don't want you to think, oh, people are probably already doing that because we're probably not. So share so that we can learn from, from each other. If you're not use, uh, receiving the Ready Teacher newsletter, we try to send it out the third week of each month. And so if you're thinking, I've never seen that, check your spam. And then if, you, if March comes along and you still haven't gotten one and there isn't anything from us in your spam, shoot us an email and we'll make sure that you receive that. And so now the time of the webinar that everyone usually waits for and is excited about, and that's the, give, the giveaway for today's webinar. So today's um, giveaway is for you to share a success story. Anna's gonna share the link in the chat section. 
and we want you by midnight tonight, so you have plenty of time, to share how you're using Ready Rosie in your classroom, in your, in your center. If you're not a Ready Rosie user, we want you to still have an opportunity to win either a class set of conversation cards or a class set of dice. And so we want you to share a story about what has, in, what has this webinar inspired you to do as far as family engagement? Maybe you're not using Ready Rosie, but what after listening to the webinar did you think, this is, this, is what, this is what I plan to do? Or maybe you're already doing something along the lines that we shared. So share that with us in the Share a Success Story. Use that link in the chat section. And we will reach out to you by the end of the week if you are um, one of our winners. So Anna, are there any other questions that we need to address? I think we've got them all. Um, there are a couple of people who we'll be following up with, but um, that's all the questions for this evening. Thank you. Great. And so I just, I want to say a very special thanks to Laura and Melissa for joining us after teaching all day. I know it's hard to um, kind of pump yourself up to come and share ideas with teachers. And so I, I truly personally appreciate you all taking the time, not only this afternoon, but in the prep, getting ready for this webinar. I also want to thank you all for listening at your school or at home or wherever you are, because as we said at the beginning, we know that you all are incredibly busy and you have a choice as to how to spend your afternoon. And we appreciate you choosing to share it with us at Ready Rosie. And as always, we want to definitely hear from you and we want you to connect with us on Facebook and Twitter. And so go, go on and have a great rest of your day and rest of your week.